Yeah, but when it's in use, let's say from May till November, um, it's the heart of our community. Like the kitchen is this heart and home place where everybody passes by. It's a nice and cozy space. Children love to be there. And people come and have a talk. And yeah, we have also our solar cooking research right there. Um, <coughs> And like cooking in this kitchen also means that we let our cooking attitude be changed by the sun. And for me it's really beautiful to see how my view on cooking changed since I use solar energy to cook. Um, that means I'm like changing for a more, from a more demanding way of cooking where I say how much energy I'm using and I say which ingredients I'm using to a more receiving way where I yeah the first thing in the day is that I check the weather and see wow what do I receive actually and then I check with which vegetables we have and what we get from our gardens and with this I create my menu and it's a totally different lifestyle Mm. Here you also see uh, the eating place, which is right next to our kitchen. Um, and yeah, it's a place where people like to be, so it's in the center of our community. Um, to have this research there means also that yeah, we live with it and we also feel how yeah, what it does with us. And also, for example, the, the people who design the cookers, they also eat there. So, they also feel if they work or not. <laughs> In our kitchen, we combine different solar cookers with a small-scale biogas producer, um, which is running on kitchen leftovers. And this combination makes it possible that we can provide three made meals a day um, for 35 to 50 people. And we really do this every day. So we are totally off grid. We don't need to go back to other energy sources. Um, and it works. And we also can celebrate that on special events. We can also provide food for up to 160 people, as we did in the last two summers. We had um, guests for 10 days and we cooked for them only with sun and biogas. So it's really a feeling of abundance. And this is also a, a big part of our research, how we can shift this thinking of that when we new use renewable energy, we often think that we need to save energy and we need to only make it with the minimum. But in our research, we see that we really can create a feeling of abundance with it. So now I'm uh, showing you which uh, cooking tools we're using. Our main cooker is the Scheffler reflector. It's a fixed focus reflector which focuses the light underneath the pot. A big advantage with this is that the cooks can stay inside. You see here that the mirror is outside and the cook is inside. Um, which is super good on hot days. Um, and you can use it with normal pots, so you can just have the normal pot cooking. Um, it's also, yeah, it's inside the kitchen and it means it's close to all the other kitchen tools. We see this with other cookers, but they are outside the kitchen, so you have uh, longer distances to walk, which makes a difference in the everyday cooking. Um, it has its own tracking system, so it follows the sun by itself. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite solar cooking tools. It has a lot of power. It's amazing to see how quick you can boil a big pot of water. Mm. 
Here you see also a pot on the Shetland River. And we also have an organ to use with the Shetland River. It was a present to our community by the Shetland family. Um, and just yesterday I made some bread with it. It reaches temperatures up to 300 degrees. And also a fact I feel often the solar cooking that for example yesterday I made this bread and then the oven is so hot and it immediately gives this inspiration to, to use the heat. And it's this amazing feeling with you, wow, there's so much energy coming and it inspires us to use it. Another cooker we use is the Parabola from Mr. Johannitsky. We got the design from this conference. Um, and we use it uh, mainly to bake vegetables in it or also to bake bread or cakes. Um, it reaches temperatures up to 160 degrees. And so far it doesn't have an own tracking system, so I need to walk there and change it like every 15 to 20 minutes. Um, but I think also a tracking system could be installed. We also had once an action where we went to the beach and were protesting against the offshore drilling and we wanted to make a statement that we don't only are against something but we show also possibilities. Um, so we brought all our solar cookers there and it was really beautiful to see how the people get inspired and could hardly believe that we made the bread there directly at the beach. Then we're also using the Tolokatsi, the design we also got from here. Thank you for this. And this we also use uh, for vegetables. And because it has this wide angle, it can just, um, I can direct it to the sun and it collects the sun for around two hours. So it's really easy to use. I put the vegetables there and then I don't need to work with it anymore. And after two hours they are cooked. Yeah, here you see it in action. <laughs> and then we also have the Booker cookers. You see uh, Celestino when he visited us. <laughs> And this we also use for vegetables and we can also bake bread and cake in it. Yeah, and as I said, all these uh, solar cookers are also combined with the biogas. And the biogas system works um, with kitchen leftovers, which produces then the gas to cook with and also fertilizer for our garden. And by this also closes the cycle so that we yeah, we have the kitchen waste and we produce energy with it again. <coughs> so in our everyday cooking, we combine all these cookers. Um, here you see that we, we have a lot of different pots and forms to fill all the cookers with. Um, most of the cookers are designed for small scale cooking, so when we cook for a lot of people, we use a lot of cookers. And then, as you see here, we need a lot of people to carry them. <laughs> and, um, yeah, the, the variety of cookers enables us to have really a rich menu and all the different types of food. Um, which is also um, a part of our research, how we can not only like cook food, but really cook food that makes us happy, food that nourishes us, like how to create a kitchen that we really like to use every day. Um, and I would say we manage quite well with all these cookers. Um, yeah, you see we have bread and vegetables, <coughs> We also have cake, we combine it with cooked stuff from other cookers, so we have really a big variety of food. Yeah, our research outcome is that flexibility 
adaptability and also good time management are really important for solar cooking. It doesn't work if you have a strict plan and then you just fulfill it. You really need to be flexible, open to uh, weather changes. Um, yeah, it just keeps you flexible. But if you have these qualities, you, have, you can have a lot of fun with solar cooking. Um, we also see that the particular cookers are uh, suitable for particular kinds of food. And yeah, as I said, when you want to have a big variety of food and yeah, a variety of menus, you need different cookers because they are all suitable for different kinds of food. Um, most of the solar cookers we use, they are not originally intended to cook for many people. So, so far we really have to use a lot and we're really interested in more large-scale cookers. So if any of you have ideas about it, we are happy to come in contact. Um, yeah, we also saw that the power of the sun is often underestimated. And we see this that, for example, the material of the cooker is... Yeah, some cookers are built in wood and then they sometimes start burning or... Yeah, things like this where we see, aha, we often underestimate the power of the sun. And I think this mirrors also that... Um, we all also underestimate it really as a valuable source which we could use and also I often see that people are astonished that we can cook so much with the sun or that it has such a strong energy or that the things get hot so quickly. Um, yeah, this is also a thing to be aware of when we design the cookers that, yeah, at the moment we are all underestimating it. Mm. I would say one of the biggest problems in our research is the communication between the cooks and the designers. And I would really love if we come more together and have a, yeah, a more fluent and ongoing communication because this is one of the crucial points when we really want to uh, make useful cookers. I think we all know examples of cookers, like beautiful cookers, and then they are standing around in a corner and nobody uses them. And yeah, I think it's just a lack of communication. And I think we should really focus on this. Um, and also I believe that if the cookers are designed in a way that the people who use them understand how they are working, then the people who use them can really um, also support the design process, support the improvement and like this opens the door for a more active participation and also for more self-responsibility in using the cookers. And this also refers back to the point about the communication that yeah, it needs to be more close together and not so separated. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, as the last outcome, I would say that by transitioning the kitchen as the central aspect of home um, in our daily life into a solar research kitchen um, with really up to date technology and also an active, ongoing uh, research process about our communication. We really um, direct a central aspect of our lives towards a technically and also sustainably future. And yeah, I think this is what we all want. Questions here? Uh, for the team? I have one suggestion. 
can use it instead of you did it. You mentioned that it needs a lot of people to to bring. Uh, yeah. You you should, you should have a, a car. <laughs> <laughs> was focusing on the cooking aspect, but I'm curious, uh, your community, uh, how, how does it uh, work with light, for example? Uh, are you using a solar photovoltaic off-grid? Are you using solar thermal for domestic hot water? What do you do for the general community energy needs? Mm -hmm. So, for example, with the water, we have um, water heating panels on the roof of our kitchen. So the water is already preheated, and then we use it for cooking. So we, yeah, it's already preheated. It's like double sun power. Um, there are also photovoltaic panels, and I mean we are working on it. We are not totally off grid. It's a research, but yeah, we are on the way. How many percent? Could you give us please a rough number? How many percent of the year you cook with the sun, and how many percent would be the biomass? Yes. It really depends on the weather, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Like we use the solar kitchen from May till November and I'd say the most of the cooking is with the sun and it's supported by biogas. Do you use, after you have cooked something with solar or biogas, do you use retained heat containers to keep that food hot for several hours if you're not yeah. in some room? Yeah, that's also a, a, a tool we use that, um, I mean, we have this one big Schaeffler mirror and uh, we use it for several hours. So I would first cook the rice and then put it in the heating box and it stays warm and then I cook the vegetables. So I... What do you use for your insulation in your heating box? Um, Styrofoam and play.